and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening, where we are going to be painting this beautiful night heron. When I go out on walks at night where I live, of course I live next to the Pacific Ocean, I can find these beautiful night herons out fishing all night long, standing along the shoreline, hoping to catch a little morsel. But before I talk too much about the bird, let's talk a little bit about the supplies that I'm using. The brush or brushes that I'm using in this painting are King Art brushes. Uh, this particular one is a is the 9020 series. The paints that I'm using this evening as I paint this guy are M Graham paints. The paint that I'm using on his beak there just a little bit is yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of paints gray and just a touch of ultramarine blue. Now these beautiful birds have some lovely dark blue, really almost an indigo colored uh, blue crown on them, very dark. And I've got a lovely gray, almost into a warm ochre color underneath uh, on their bellies. So you're gonna see me go through a couple of different colors here what I'm working with at the moment is a mixture of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue dropping in just a bit here of some Payne's gray. Payne's gray will help to keep it a little bit in that blue family as I continue to draw the paint out across the back side of this bird. Now, if you can see the drawing, I've got it drawn in basically three, four different blocks or different areas. And I'm going to try to keep within those areas. You can see being very careful right there uh, to paint within the lines. I'm going to try to do that on this painting. Painting within the lines isn't always something I'm uh, known for doing a whole lot. And oftentimes isn't something I'm very good at doing, but... Gonna work my hardest to do that here. But you can see I've just strengthened my blue a little bit with a little extra bit of phthalo blue on his back as those feathers are coming right down his back. There we go. We're almost done with that whole first layer and he's starting to look very nice, starting to look like a bird anyways. I don't think I've mentioned the paper that I'm using is Arches paper. It's a 140 pound cold pressed paper and uh, I like it very much. Here I'm just putting on some base color for his legs as you can see. And this is just some straight yellow ochre on those legs down right to where he's standing on that little stick or twig or tiny little log all the way along his toes there. They're way out on the end of those toes. I don't know if anybody has heard me talk about these brushes before. I very much like uh, these 9020 series uh, paint brushes from King Art. I just saw an ad online and decided I would take a chance and buy this about the whole set. I bought them on sale, so I don't think it cost me more than $40 or so, probably plus shipping. But the 9020 series is a pointed round series. You can see that this brush, which I believe is a size 6, comes to a wonderful point. I've had these brushes for about a year now, and I haven't worn the tips down yet. They are still fantastic brushes. I still use them as my daily brush as I do my painting. I told you that the, the underbelly, the underneath 
the underside of this bird, if you will, really has some warm colors. Right up under his chin here, maybe, you know, maybe that's dipped in the water a few times. Maybe it's splashed around in the mud a little bit. He's got a little extra warmth. That's just some yellow ochre, some straight yellow ochre that I'm putting on. And I want to blend that out as far as I think I need to. And then quite a bit of Payne's Gray in here with just a touch of ultramarine mixed in with it. There it is right up to that line where his feathers are, where his flight feathers are up on the top. Trying not to keep a, a firm straight edge as I paint down. He's got a few feathers hanging down there. I want to make sure I get those represented really well. And adding a little bit of color as I work towards his tail. If I think that's a little bit too much, I can add a little bit of water and thin that out a little bit at this point, as long as everything is staying nice and wet. But I think what we've got there is, is pretty good. And again, I'm trying real hard to stay within those lines and deliver a really nice painting. There he goes. For almost everything, oh, we'll warm him up a little bit there with a little bit of burnt umber. For almost everything, as, as far as we go, that is our first layer of paint on this guy. From here on out, we're just going to be building on this and continuing to refine our colors and enhance what is there. Sure, if need be. He's sitting on this little log or stick, or I guess it's too big to be a twig. So let's give that some color also. Again, this is uh, some yellow ochre. This has got a little bit of neutral tint in it. This has got a little bit of cobalt blue in it. That's a bit of Payne's gray mixed with just a touch of ultramarine uh, to, to give a little shadow area, hopefully give a little dimension to that stick that this guy is standing on. Now, in my reference photo, he's standing on a stick in the middle of a, of a body of water, a lake, a river, a stream. It doesn't quite look like the ocean to me. But I, I, I'm not representing that here. I just want to do everything uh, around the bird. The, the stick that he's standing on, his legs, his feathers, his beak. Um, I'll leave the background in the surrounding water for another painting. There he is. Now it should be pretty dry up there on the top. We ought to be able to go back up and start with another layer and darken where we need to, darken around what we don't need. I said that the feathers on their head is quite dark. So I'm putting this on. This is a mix of phthalo blue, a little bit of sepia in it, a little bit of neutral tint in it, quite dark. And you don't need to paint all of the feathers individually like that. I like to paint them as I'm going. Sometimes I paint them and then paint over top of them. Uh, and that's okay. Just want to make sure I've got them represented. And then right along his back here, we've got some flight feathers. And I just want to represent those. So I'm actually doing a little bit of negative painting here by... Painting around the feathers on the top, then drawing the paint out with a little bit of water and letting that just blend down a little bit. I do, if you have not noticed by now, 
turn my page when I paint. I don't make any apologies for that. I, I try to keep it as straight as I can, but as I'm looking at it, and I think that the page needs to be turned a little bit to get the best brush stroke on, well, then I do go ahead and turn my page. I try not to speed up the video too much because I understand that that could make it a bit hard to watch. So if that is a little hard for you, I understand. I apologize. Just leave me a comment down below and let me know that it makes it a little tough. I'll, I'll take that into consideration and try holding my page maybe a little bit smoother. All right, so we've got three layers of feathers on, on the top, on his back, those flight feathers up there. And now he's got some feathers. Let's give a row of feathers on his side. And uh, this bird's feathers are quite square-ish. They don't come to a point. So I don't have to paint a whole lot of Vs. Um, I'm good with painting a few. Oh, that area was just a tiny bit wet yet. I'm good with painting some squares and some random shapes to let that represent uh, the feathers that you see. This dark is actually back behind him. That's a wing uh, behind on the back side back there. Because I think it is. I don't remember. It's just his underbelly. It has a nice dark spot to it. It's been a short while since I've painted this. I found this video again. and So I'm trying to get this out for everybody. Which is why I, I don't remember what that black stripe is. It looks to be like he's just got a big black feather down there underneath. And the same things with the feathers here. I'm going to paint like around his cheek. <laughs> if you can say that a bird has a cheek. And a second layer on his beak. Just to try and intensify that color a little bit. Here we go. It's nice and dark. In general, these birds have a pretty dark beak. I'm not going to say that it's black, but it's pretty dark. Now, I did say I really admire these birds. I like watching them. Uh, when I stroll down to the waterside at night, I do see them. There is one spot by the harbor mouth that last year I counted over 20 of them uh, by the dock all together, all fishing in one spot. But typically when I see these birds, I'm walking during the day down to the ocean and they roost during the days in the trees down by the water and so you can see the birds and walk up to them and you can usually get within a foot or two of the birds or three but you can get pretty close to most of these birds before they notice you and start to get a little nervous and uh, they will try their hardest to hop through the branches uh, to get away from you. I don't typically force them to get away from me all that much as I enjoy going to watch them. So just from afar, I will uh, watch them sleep a little bit. Sometimes uh, the trees that I walk past, I will see three, four, five, sometimes six in each of those trees. And it's just a nice, um, it's 
stop on my walk to say hello to these birds. And there you go. Now I've got basically on his side, on his flank there, I've basically got one, two, three different levels of feathers there. And you can see lightest at the top and getting a little bit darker as it goes down. It really provides a nice effect for adding some depth to this bird. Those feathers you can see definitely are standing apart and not laying right on top of each other. A wonderful effect that you can uh, gain for yourself. And now kind of, I guess that's kind of underneath his chin where I'm painting now doing the same technique to make that stand out. I guess maybe, maybe I didn't like where I'd put that bit of paint to start with, but you can see now he's got a big puffy throated area. I don't know if that's a crop or a gullet or something like that, but you can definitely see that maybe he's actually got something in his in his throat that he's caught. And he's waiting for that to slide on down to his stomach. But already he's starting to look really good. The stick, the branch, the log that he's standing on has a nice start to it with the blue on the bottom, the blue gray down there. It's already got some dimension to it. Let's just strengthen that a little bit and add a little bit, a little bit more dimension to that log. A little stronger. Make it look like a like an old piece of wood that's been in the water for quite a long time. And adding a little piece on the end to try to bring out the fact that it's round. And there it is. I don't like hard water edges, so you'll see me go back from time to time with an extremely dry brush and pull some of that water off. Now, the top of his legs up here, I guess his thighs, around his knee, maybe on the back of his legs, are in quite a bit more shadow than the rest of his legs. So... I'm using a bit of burnt umber here with just a touch of yellow ochre to add some shadow, some darkness to give those legs a little bit of dimension. And it's important to add some of that dimension to the toes too. If you add it to the toes, the toes will give the illusion to the rest of the legs in many cases and make it look more believable. Now here on his neck or his gullet, I can do the same thing I did in other places and just add an extra layer of feathers to give it a little bit more believability. Each time you do it, you're going to add another layer of depth to your painting. I think he's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit of work uh, needs to be done on the feathers. And of course, what we're doing right now is painting his eye. Now, these birds do have quite stunning eyes. I'm painting it red here. They are often red in real life. And when you see one of these staring back at you during the day with a bright red eye, it can be a little bit alarming. But uh, they're non-aggressive. And once you understand that's just how they look, then it's all good. Right. 
just enhancing a little bit the feathers. I think that's basically what we have to do on the rest of it. Determine how much we want those feathers to stand out. Determine how much detail we want on some of the feathers on the side of this bird's body. Do we need to put in any detail? Or is he good the way he is? I think we're going to need a little bit more detail, but not too much. Yeah, let's enhance his eye. I don't want to paint the whole thing just all solid red. I do want a good portion of it to be red. And it's going to blend towards the center anyway. Yep. Where there needs to be just a little bit of shadow to make a couple of these feathers stand out. I'm going to drop in a little bit of that. And I bring them back to center and Take a look to see what else might need to be done. His tail feathers are quite short. But we haven't yet set them all apart from each other. Now is as good a time as any to do that. So I'll paint one and I'll skip a little area to allow it to dry. And then I'll paint a little shadow underneath another one and then skip a little area. And do the next one and the next one. Before we know it, we'll have all of them painted. Maybe there's an extra feather or two hanging out in here. We can add it in however we want. We just need to make a little bit of value difference. A little goes a long way. See, especially when you're using lighter colors. Here's a big area. We can certainly define some of the feathers up there and fill in some area that dried a little splotchy. We can fix that however we like. I really like this guy. I like painting birds. It's very relaxing painting birds. Really should do more of it. Seems I'm always trying to move on to the next biggest best thing and I don't stick on one subject for all that long. But maybe I should revisit birds and do some more of them. They're exceedingly fun to paint and they usually turn out pretty nice. Just like this painting. I think we're just going to enhance the difference between a couple of these feathers in here. Maybe draw a line on a feather. If there's a break in one, maybe one of these feathers isn't quite perfect. It's got a little notch out of it. Let's just put that on. Draw these lines up a little bit. Extend our feathers up closer to the layer above it. And a well-placed line here and there without having too many of them makes it look as though there are even more feathers. But you can see his tail now. The feathers are really starting to come together and we haven't, we haven't really done much with it. Yep. And up on his back 
just making sure that all these feathers are individual feathers. There it goes. Extend that up. Line in between those areas. Makes the eye think that those feathers are all individual feathers. We painted them as a group. But that little bit of division makes it seem as though they are individuals. All right. It's a little tiny bit of enhancement on his beak. And a little, give him his little nose, a little nostril there, something to breathe out of. That way he doesn't have to open his beak every time he wants to breathe. Waiting for a couple of places to dry so we can continue to enhance these feathers. There's not much more to go on this painting yet. We've got about two minutes to go. I'm going to take this time to say you can check the links down below. I've got links to my social media. And to my website, if you're so inclined and would like to help donate for some art supplies so I can continue to make paintings like this and bring them to you, uh, there are a couple of links down there you can use to donate some money. It would be greatly appreciated, but not necessary. Just enhancing these tail feathers a little bit. The more you work those lines, as long as you're staying within the line, the more they differentiate, differentiate themselves from one another. With about a minute to go, I'm going to say, if you'd like to see something else, leave it in the comments below. I take everybody's um, wishes to heart. Sometimes I do a practice run and I'll give it a try on a video. Uh, if I can't do it, I usually will let you know why I can't do it. But I do like accepting challenges and I do like doing paintings that make things more interactive. So if there is something you would like to see, leave it in the comment space below. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And there we go. There's my version of a night heron. Thank you.